In last week's episode, we looked at an extremely powerful tool for understanding the strange space-time both in and around black holes. This is the Penrose diagram. It compactifies our representation of the dimensions of space and time, allowing us to fit onto the one diagram the infinitely stretched space-time in the vicinity of a black hole's event horizon. The Penrose diagram allows us to easily understand the limits of our access to this universe. That limit is defined by where something travelling at the speed of light can get to, and the speed of light is always at a 45 degree angle on this diagram. Today, we're going to use the Penrose diagram to look at the difference between the idealised theoretical black hole that we discussed in the previous episode versus the real astrophysical black holes that actually dwell out there in the universe. And then we'll use this knowledge to address a very serious, although questionably plausible scenario involving an alien black hole attack. The Penrose diagram we looked at represents a Schwarzschild black hole, so no electric charge and no rotation, but also an eternal black hole. It always existed, never growing, never leaking. Of course, there is no such thing. At the very least, even a Schwarzschild black hole must have formed at some point. A black hole forms when the core of a very massive star collapses under its own gravity at the end of the star's life. So what does this look like on a Penrose diagram? Let's start with a nice empty universe. Empty except for a single giant star. When the core of this star has fused all of its elements into iron, it'll start to collapse under its own weight. There's a specific size that represents the point of no return for this collapse. This is the Schwarzschild radius. The larger the mass of the collapsing object, the larger this radius. If the star's core collapses to a size smaller than its own Schwarzschild radius, then the event horizon forms, engulfing what's left of the star. Below that horizon, but above the still shrinking surface of the star, space-time takes on the mad properties of the black hole interior. Space and time switch places, and the singularity soon forms, with all space within the black hole flowing towards it faster than the speed of light. Outside the black hole, the event horizon becomes the new edge of the universe on our Penrose diagram. The shape of space-time outside the horizon warps to make this diagonal line a line of constant radius, the radius of the new black hole. But here is something really weird. There are regions in this otherwise normal space where everything is doomed to fall into the singularity even though the black hole has not finished forming. There's a region where all forward light cones only include the singularity, even before the true event horizon forms. For anything in this region, there isn't enough time to clear the impending event horizon even travelling at the speed of light. On the Penrose diagram, we should extend our effective event horizon backwards to include that space. This invisible horizon of doom grows as the star shrinks and finally merges with the true event horizon. Any observers within this extended event horizon are cut off from any future causal connection with the rest of the universe. Or are they? Okay, in the case of the collapsing star, that stellar core is going to be an insanely hot, dense place and not great for observers. But we can imagine a scenario in which the black hole is about to form around you, and yet you are perfectly comfortable all the way up to and even briefly after that happens. Scenario. A super advanced alien civilization decides to build a giant black hole that will engulf the planet Earth. It doesn't matter why. I don't know, they're light years away. Maybe they just saw the first Star Wars prequel. So these guys plan to destroy the Earth with a Kugelblitz, a black hole formed entirely from light. Their spaceships form a sphere around the solar system and blast a pulse of light inwards. This gigantic shell of light is centered on the Earth and will reach us in about a day. Now, light has energy and so has a gravitational effect. This blast has a mass energy equivalence of 100,000 suns. The Schwarzschild radius of a black hole with this mass is about one light second. So, 
the Kugelblitz event horizon forms just after the shell of light passes the moon. At that point, it will look exactly like a black hole from the outside. From the inside, Earth has one second in which it notices absolutely nothing wrong before it's consumed in the singularity. Why? Because Newton's shell theorem tells us that the entire inside of a spherically symmetric shell of mass or energy feels no gravitational force from that shell. Space inside the collapsing Kugelblitz would remain comfortably flat until the collapsing shell overtakes it, even after the event horizon forms. So here's my challenge question. Our own homeworld security agents discovered this plot, so there's a chance we can do something. Two competing plans are put forward. Plan A is to build an infinitely strong Dyson sphere surrounding the Earth just outside the Moon's orbital radius. It would completely absorb the incoming pulse, storing it as a ridiculous amount of electrical energy and the accompanying increase in mass. Maybe that energy can then power a superweapon to fight the aliens? Plan B is to launch a vast satellite network that can produce a perfectly reflective spherical force shield about halfway between the Earth and the Moon. This shield will reflect all light outwards and uses an impossible EM drive technology that allows it to ignore conservation of momentum so the satellites don't get ricocheted back to Earth. Maybe the outgoing light wave will destroy the alien ships. Let's assume that these plans can be executed, but only exactly as described, and humanity has to choose one and only one. You receive a conference call from various world leaders. They've heard that you watch PBS Space Time, and so they want your opinion on the plans. Which do you recommend as slightly less hopeless? Operation Phoenix Eggs, Dyson Sphere, or Operation Disco Ball's Reflective Shield. The President is especially upset, so draw a nice Penrose diagram of the situation to show why your preferred plan has the best shot. Submit your carefully explained and diagrammed answer to pbsspacetime at gmail.com within two weeks of release of this episode for a chance to win a Spacetime t-shirt and obviously to save the world. So assuming there's no Kugelblitz apocalypse, I'll see you next week for a new episode of Spacetime.